Okay, in our final tutorial today, we will have a look at the so-called graph-based planner. So first of all, let's go into our third folder called graph-based planner, open the folder and you see a bunch of files here. First of all, we start directly with the graph-based planner multi-vehicle file here. Of course, this algorithm is a little bit more complicated and has a little bit more code behind it than the other one. And you see, for example, our main file where we start the simulation here is having 544 lines of code only. But in the background, you find a lot of more. Of course, you have the time and if you're interested in, then you can have a detailed look into the graph planner and all its algorithms but here we will show you the highlights and what is most important about this algorithm here so we will again now focus on the high level overview of the code and we will focus on what is necessary here we defined again a class called graph based planner and in this graph based planner you find again a lot of functionalities we have or what we do here we focus on the most important ones and the most important one is for, for us the function called plan in this function first of all we need to initialize the planner that is what is necessary to just create the planner environment. And then we're going into an online loop. This online loop is more like a via loop that is constantly run until the simulation is over. So first of all, we need to give the trajectory planner or our behavior planner an idea of where he wants to drive right left straight follow this is part of this algorithm and gives us the power just to choose from a bunch of trajectories then second we need to get the object list in here we can have static obstacles and dynamic obstacles and in addition here we are getting the information from our simulation environment so we are having the ground truth information x y the heading theta and the velocity of our obstacle this functionality here can be replaced with a perception algorithm or an object detection algorithm the next part is we are finally or this is like the main part we are calculating all the possible path for the next time step this is where we calculate all the trajectories that are uh, located on our graph we have created before then we need to get our own position again here similar to the pure pursuit algorithm we get that from the um, from the simulation environment which is again our ground truth this needs to be replaced with in the real vehicle with a localization algorithm then as displayed in a the theory we are calculating a speed profile that gives us the speed on the spline and then we have just some additional visualizations for you integrated here let's have a look now on how this um, works out or what do we see when we start all the parameters here so first of all what we do we start this graph planner file the first thing you see is that you see the environment creating here you see now two vehicles showing up because we have a multi environment and you see here that first of all the offline part of the graph planner is starting now in the background all the algorithms algorithms are running to create you the final graph this is the graph where we want to drive on and this graph looks exactly like this you see here now our racetrack and this racetrack has now its state lattice integrated you see the state lattice is the individual dots here on the norm vectors 
and each of the dots are now connected with each other and that's the possible area where the car can drive. When I focus now on one of the points, you see here now in orange, all the possible splines that can be created and all the possible points that can be reached from this point only. For example, when I go here to the outer side, you see that when the car has a certain curvature and a certain speed, it cannot reach the points on the other side, for example. In addition, if we go here to the right side, what you see, for example, here, this area, for example, doesn't have nodes that are connected with each other. That means in our case, based on the parameters we have chosen, that is not an area where we can drive. This has advantages and disadvantages. An advantage for us is that we don't need to take care to search in this area. An advantage is that we are faster in the end. And an advantage is that we say we mainly focus here on our race line that is integrated here as a dashed line. A big disadvantage is that we cannot use this area, for example, for an evasive maneuver if we want to drive there. But that's just, again, the theory and the underlying pros and cons of the so-called graph planner. Now let's close this window here and have a look at the simulation because when we close this window here, the simulation environment starts. We will see now that the um, simulation is using, um, is using first of all our blue here created um, simulation environment and what we see in addition on the left side here is an additional graphic that shows us what the cars are currently doing and what kind of trajectory is planned. You see here on the left side that we have in red planned our brick trajectory. We try to overtake this vehicle and we constantly replan and try to select the best trajectory in this environment here. But for example, it can be that we are choosing one of these trajectories, try to follow it and the car in front of us is making something stupid and we cannot follow it again. For example, what we see here, we try to overtake, we sped up the car, but we needed to brake afterwards because it was too critical. But now you see here we have the straight and the car is going for the overtake maneuver, is having enough space and is overtaking the other car. In this case, you saw that we performed a very, very good overtaking maneuver. And if we go down here a little bit, you see what the car is currently doing and where it's moving along the race track. This is very interesting and gives you a lot of insights. And this is how the graph planner currently looks like. Again, this is a very complicated algorithm and needs quite some understanding. But what you can do here, you can open the params file and have parameters you can choose. For example, first of all, the graph itself. You have here parameters that you can use to parameterize the state letters. For example, the state space discretation in meters, which means the distance of one node's laterally distributed on a normal vector. Or for example, you can select the distance of one norm vectors on a straight line in meters, which means like every five meter on a straight, we want to have letters. Or you can, in addition, um, optimize the parameter in curves, like when you have a curve or turn, you want the lattice to be a little bit more narrow. Of course, you have much more parameters, not only from the offline part, but also from the online part. And for example, what is most important here, the tuning of the cost of the parameter. That's what we discussed in theory. This parameter afterwards give you the final vehicle behavior. And of course, you have the possibility to come up with even better and different cost parameters. And of course, you can vary them as you want. 
Now it's time for you to play a little bit with this graph planner and this multi-vehicle environment. I hope you enjoyed um, uh, this short presentation. Have fun with the code.